Greetings Earthlings, today I'm back with another review of a brand new handheld dynamic microphone from Sennheiser. That microphone being the Sennheiser MD445, which is a super cardioid handheld dynamic microphone. If you are interested in this mic, it will cost around $500. Like always, I'll throw some links down below. In the sake of full disclosure, I do need to let you know that Sennheiser did send me this microphone so that I'm able to do this review. And for this review, I have the microphone connected directly to the Focusrite 18i 22nd Gen. My gain is set at around 4 o'clock. I will not do any kind of post-processing, but I may have to boost it a little bit in post, so check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did. And now let's talk about what comes in the box. First off, you'll get a zippered carrying pouch. You'll of course get the microphone a microphone mount as well as a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter, five additional foam inserts to replace the foam on the inside of the head basket, and a couple pieces of documentation. Then as far as the build quality, I have zero complaints and it is very similar to the E835 and E935 build quality which is just excellent. It does have an all metal body as well as a very firm metal mesh grill which I can't get to move with my fingers. It weighs in at 329 grams. As we move around the microphone there are no buttons, no on or off switches. The rear or the bottom has the XLR port. If you're curious here is what the microphone's capsule looks like with the basket off of it. And if it matters to you this microphone is made in Germany. Then as far as the specs, this microphone has a super cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 40 hertz to 20 kilohertz, a sensitivity of around negative 56 decibels, an impedance of 245 ohms, a self noise or equivalent noise level of 18 dBA, and a max SPL of 163 dB. Now I am spinning around the MD445 to 90 degrees so you can hear the off-axis rejection and coloration. We'll continue around to maybe 120 degrees. Then we will rotate and end at 180. This should have another lobe of sensitivity right here. Continuing around the microphone and continuing to talk. Then we are at 90 degrees and then we'll rotate and end at the front of the mic. Next, let's go ahead and test the plosive rejection of this thing. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now I'm right on top of the microphone to demonstrate the proximity effect on this thing. Now I'm about three inches off of the microphone with it pointed at the corner of my mouth. And here is how the audio is sounding. About one foot away from the microphone, two feet away from the microphone, and about four feet away from the microphone. Whoa! Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And now for you elite gaming folk out there, I am typing on the sad W keys. Here is how the microphone sounds in a well-treated room. And here is how the microphone sounds in a completely untreated room. Now because this is a handheld microphone, I'll pass it back and forth between my hands so you can hear what kind of handling noise there is. Now I want to demonstrate how well the microphone and the provided stand reject shocks that might make their way into the microphone. So currently, I'm tapping on my desk. And then I will tap on the boom arm. Next, because I absolutely love annoying all of you, I'm going to go ahead and tap the body of the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. And next, in order to be as thorough as possible, I'm going to demonstrate some poor microphone technique. Here is how the microphone sounds if you are using it properly. And now here is how the microphone sounds if you've cupped the grill and covered the entire sides of it. Still sounds tolerable, not terrible. It's not good, but it's not terrible. It's not completely destroyed. There you go. That is the cupped mic test. 
Next, like always, we're going to do a quick comparison between the MD445 and a bunch of other microphones on the market so we can see how it stacks up against the competition. We will start on the MD445. I am three inches off of this. My gain is set at four o'clock, 24 bit, 48 kilohertz, and here is how it sounds. First up, I am on the AKG D5. This is a $100 super cardioid handheld dynamic microphone, and I am three inches off. My gain is still set at four o'clock. Check the lower third to see how much I boosted each of these microphones in post. And there you go, first microphone down. Let's do some more comparisons. Back on the MD445 so you can hear how this sounds quickly. Nothing has changed. Let's jump to the next microphone. Secondly, we are on the classic, the infamous Shure SM58. This is a $100 handheld dynamic microphone that is cardioid, and I am three inches off, gain at four o'clock. Check the lower third, I will have to boost this one significantly more than the others, at least it sounds like I will in my headphones. There you go, SM58, let's jump back to the Sennheiser. Again, we are back on the 445, so you can hear this in between the microphones. If you've forgotten, this is a $500 Super Cardioid Dynamic Mic. Let's jump to the next one. Now we are on another Sennheiser offering. This is the E835. This costs $100, and this is a cardioid only, handheld dynamic. Check the lower third to see how much I boosted each of these in post. But there you go, $100 from Sennheiser versus $500 from Sennheiser. Which one do you like better? Let's jump back to the 445 and do some more comparisons. We're back on the 445 again, so you can hear this. Here is how it sounds, three inches off, same gain settings, same distance, same everything. Let's jump to the next mic. Next, we are on the Electro Voice ND76. Nothing has changed. I am three inches off of this thing. Gain at four o'clock, 24 bit, 48 kilohertz. This is a $100 cardioid only handheld dynamic. And there you go. Electro voice at $100 versus Sennheiser at $500. Let's jump back and do some more tests. Back on the MD445 again, so you can hear this. Reminder, this is a super cardioid dynamic microphone. A lot of these more affordable microphones are going to be just plain cardioid. Keep that in mind. Let's jump to the next mic. Now we are on the SE Electronics SEV7. This is another $100 handheld dynamic microphone. This is a super cardioid dynamic. I am three inches off, gain at four o'clock, 24 bit, 48 kilohertz, all that stuff. Check the lower third and there you go. SE Electronics versus Sennheiser. Let's jump back to the Sennheiser. We are on the MD445 again, so you can hear how this sounds in between all the mics we're comparing it against. Here is how it sounds. Let's jump to the next microphone. Now we are on the Audix OM2. This is a hypercardioid handheld dynamic microphone. This costs $100, three inches off of this thing. Nothing else has changed. Check the lower third, and there you go. Audix versus Sennheiser. Let's jump back and do some more comparisons. MD445 again, three inches off. Gain at four o'clock, no post processing. Check the lower third to see how much I boosted it, and let's jump to the next microphone. Now we are on the Sennheiser E935. This goes for, I believe, $200, maybe it's $250, but when I looked it up today, it was $200. This is a cardioid-only handheld dynamic microphone, three inches off, and here is how it sounds. $200 versus $500 from the same company. Which one do you like better? Well, let's jump back to the 445 and do more comparisons because we are not done yet. Here we are again on the Sennheiser MD445, a super cardioid handheld dynamic microphone, which costs $500. Let's jump to the next microphone and compare it to that. Now we are on the Bayer Dynamic TGV70D. This is a hypercardioid handheld dynamic microphone. This also goes for around $200. And here is how it sounds. I am three inches off of it. My gain is set at four o'clock. Check the lower third, and let's jump back to the Sennheiser and do a couple more comparisons. 
We are back on the MD445 again, so you can hear how this sounds. Nothing has changed. Let's jump to the next microphone and do that comparison quickly. Now we are on the Buyer Dynamic M88TG. This is a $400 hypercardioid handheld dynamic microphone. I am three inches off of this thing. My gain is set at four o'clock, 24 bit, 48 kilohertz, and here is how it sounds. We're getting up there to around the same price as the Sennheiser. This is Buyer Dynamics offering hypercardioid versus supercardioid, $400 versus $500. Let's jump back to the 445 and do a couple more comparisons. Here we are again on the Sennheiser MD445, three inches off, gain at four o'clock, 24 bit, 48 kilohertz, no post processing. And here is how it sounds. Let's jump to the next microphone and do a couple more comparisons. Now I am on the Shure KSM8. This is their dual dyne microphone, if I remember correctly, and this costs $400. This is a cardioid only microphone, and here is how it sounds three inches off with the gain at four o'clock. Same resolution, same all of that. Here is how it sounds. Let's jump back to the Sennheiser and do a couple more comparisons. I think I've said that about a couple of times. Weird. I know we've done a lot of these, but we are back on the MD445 again because you need to have full context. There are a lot of mics out there competing with this. I want to give you a somewhat full picture. It's never going to be completely full because then we'd be here for a week comparing every single handheld dynamic or every single handheld stage microphone. We're not going to do that. Now I am on the alternative, the sibling to the MD-445. This is the Sennheiser MD-435, the 435. This is a cardioid version of the microphone as opposed to the super cardioid microphone, and I apologize for popping the microphone. Can I say microphone anymore? Regardless, all the same settings, same distance, MD-435 versus the MD-445. Let's jump back and do another comparison. I bet you wouldn't have thunk it, but we are on the MD-445 again, so you can hear how this sounds before we jump to the next microphone, get a good feel for how this sounds, three inches off, let's jump to the, the next one. I don't know if it's the last one. Now I am on the Lewitt MTP940CM. This is a multi-pattern handheld condenser microphone. This costs $600, and I am currently on the Super Cardioid Polar Pattern, so we match to the Sennheiser MD445, and here is how this is sounding compared to the Sennheiser. Condenser versus Dynamic, same polar pattern. Gain on this is set at 2 o'clock because it has a significantly hotter output. But there you go. Lewitt's condenser offering versus Sennheiser's higher end handheld dynamic. Let's go back and do one or two more comparisons. It's never going to end. Now for good measure in case I have some other microphones I want to compare, here I am on the 445 again so you can hear how I sound. Let's go ahead and jump to another microphone and do that comparison. Now I am on one of my all-time favorite handheld microphones. This is the Neumann KMS-105. This is a super cardioid condenser microphone, which costs $700. You are paying for that Neumann brand, but you are getting an excellent sound. My gain on this is set at 4 o'clock. Very quiet for a condenser microphone, but there you go. Neumann, actually owned by Sennheiser. Just so you know, there's some more information. Take it, put it in your head, and make an informed decision. Take that information. Neumann, <laughs> Neumann KMS-105. I wasn't going to do this, but I have one more comparison that I have to do. You all know what it's going to be. But that was the Neumann KMS-105 $700 handheld condenser versus the MD-445 from Sennheiser $500 handheld dynamic. And again, here we are on the MD-445. I believe this is going to be the last microphone that we can pair it against. Three inches off of this. Gain at four o'clock. No post-processing. Here is how it sounds. Let's jump to the last microphone. 
And lastly, I am on the Neumann U87 AI. This microphone costs between $32 and $36 or $3,700. It is a multi-pattern, large diaphragm condenser microphone. I am on the cardioid mode. And yes, I am hand-holding it. Get off my back. I'm not going to mount all these microphones for these. I am about three inches off of this. My gain is at 1130. It's ridiculous to handhold this. And there you go. It's kind of a meme. It's kind of a joke at this point. But I have to get the use out of this U87 to justify buying it. Just wait until I test out the U67. <laughs> that will be used 12 times in every video. Okay, that is it. Let me know in the comments down below which of these microphones was your favorite. Do you think the 445 is worth the price tag? Or is there a more affordable option that you prefer? There you go. Let's jump to the music section now. Is this handheld Sennheiser good for studio work? Let's find out. I know I already hear the comments. Oh, it's a handheld stage dynamic microphone. What are you doing? Hush up. You get a microphone, you try it on everything you got, and see if there's something that you weren't expecting it to work on that it works on. You may find a diamond in the rough, a jack of all trades, and it's a beautiful day when that happens, but let's go ahead and jump to the conclusion now. Okay, I think that Sennheiser designed the MD445 for a specific use case, and I think the microphone would work very well for that use case. And first up in terms of pros, the off-axis coloration on this thing was excellent, so the sound making it in from the side and the rear is not going to sound absolutely abysmal. Also, the handling noise rejection on this was great. The background noise rejection was also incredible. Additionally, you have a max SPL of 163 dB, so you're never going to have to worry about clipping this thing. The build quality feels absolutely outstanding, and if it matters to you, the microphone is made in Germany, and I do think that is a pro in terms of at least ethical manufacturing. And then as far as cons, the main issue that I have with this microphone is the top end. It's not that it's unsmooth, it's that I think it's a bit too forward with a plus 10 dB boost, if not more. I just think the top end is a little bit too pronounced on this mic. And now what are my overall thoughts and opinions of this microphone? I'll tell you up front, my thoughts and opinions are going to be very similar to that of the Sennheiser MD435. But as far as the electric guitar, I really enjoyed it. The microphone has essentially a built-in high-pass filter, which I like on guitar. The microphone has a built-in treble and air boost, which I like on electric guitar. The mids are not screwed up. They are pretty neutral, which I like on the guitar. I just all around really liked it on the guitar. But because the top end is so boosted, I do think that it may not be a good fit for more aggressive, really treble intense metal guitars or anything like that. And when you do get to the upper register, I do think it starts to get a little unpleasant. Then on the acoustic guitar, I simply think that it's too bright. I think the top end, especially when I was attacking the strings, got to be a bit too piercing and sharp sounding. It's not an acoustic microphone, it's not designed for that, and it, in my opinion, it just doesn't work for that. Next up for singing, again, that is my favorite application for this microphone, exactly like the MD-435. 
There is no denying that this is an exceedingly bright microphone, but the thing about it is, yes, it is very boosted in the top end, but it is a very smooth boost, so it offers a really shiny top end. But if you don't like a lot of top end in your microphones, you're not going to like it. It also doesn't have too much heft in the low end, and I think all around it gives you a very similar EQ shape to a live performance because it has that high pass filter built in. It has that boost in the presence treble and air to make it cut through the mix. So it's giving you that live EQ kind of plug and play. And lastly, for spoken word, I was not a fan of it for that application. I think everybody knows that I am a huge, huge fan of more neutral sounding microphones. And this has a 10 dB boost in the top end. That is just too aggressive, in my opinion, for spoken word, especially when the voice is not fighting other sound sources to be heard. If it is just a solo voice or a couple of spoken word voices without anything that is battling the spoken word voices, I think the EQ curve on this is just not very flattering. And to wrap up, would I recommend the Sennheiser MD-445? Yes and no. I think that the 445 was designed for more of a plug-and-play singing live microphone, mainly because it essentially has a built-in high-pass filter, it has a built-in presence treble and air boost, both things that are very popular for live singing microphones. It also did incredible at handling noise rejection, great background noise rejection, and the off-axis coloration was stellar. All of those things combined make a very appealing stage singing microphone. So if you're looking for a microphone that fits that bill and the curve, the sound profile of this microphone fits what you try to do with EQ on your mics, then absolutely I would recommend it. But on the other hand, if you're looking at this microphone for solo spoken word, I don't think I can recommend it because as I mentioned, I think the EQ, the sound profile of this is a bit too aggressive and a bit too specialized for live environments. And if a voice is not battling a sound bed or a, a very aggressive guitar or a drum set, I don't think the EQ needs to be as exaggerated as this is. So for spoken word, I think there are much better options out there. I think the E935, the SM58, SEV7, any of the other handheld dynamics probably going to be better for solo spoken word. And the last thing I'll address is when you should pick the MD-435 and the MD-445. If I had to pick one of these microphones for spoken word, I would pick the MD-435. I thought it had a beefier low end, and that really helped offset the big boost in the top end. And then as far as singing and actually using it in a live environment, that's going to come down to each individual use case. If you need the super cardioid where you have null areas around 120, 150 degrees, go with the MD-445. But if you have monitors at around 180 degrees or you have loud sound sources at 180 degrees, the MD-435 would be the one that I would choose. All right, I think that's going to wrap up for today. I don't know how this video ended up being so long, but I hope you found that useful. I would love to hear from you in the comments down below. We did 13 microphones in this comparison. Unlucky number 13, which one was your favorite? Let me know in the comments down below. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, give me a big old thumbs down. If you want more videos, you can't, you can't, you can you can subscribe. <laughs> Why was that so hard to say? You can subscribe by clicking the logo down beneath me. And do not forget to hit that bell icon so you can check out all the reviews and all the stuff that I do on this channel. I'm an idiot who cannot speak. If you want to hang out in the Discord server, you can do so by going to podcastage.com slash Discord. And if you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, you can do so by clicking that join button or going to patreon.com slash podcastage and joining at the $5 tier or higher. It really does help me continue to bring you these videos. So until next time, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I'll talk to you later.